Not far from Fort Pomme de Terre, a pioneer village once stood at a bustling frontier crossroad. Today, all that remains is an old schoolhouse and a graveyard. Local historian Marilyn Mao is the great-granddaughter of August Schaefer, who once built a grain mill here. Timothy Hill, this uh, platted the, the, town, the town site in 1868, and it was recorded in 1874, and it is the first village to be um, uh, the oldest one in the, in the county. This little school was, uh, the land was given by the Heels, as was most of the land for the town site. They had great dreams for this place. Uh, Timothy Heald thought that perhaps they could be named the county seat. So they were in competition with Elbow Lake and Herman at one point, and uh, they thought the railroad was coming here because there had been some surveying, but the railroad went north and the railroad went south. And so their dreams were kind of crushed. But they all, my great-grandfather came in 1873 and built quite a, a large mill, which is down south of the school here. And it, it uh, drew lots and lots of people. And this was a busy little place. I mean, we know with the fort that there were ox carts and there were um, army trains and military trains going through. There were pioneers with their covered wagons going through. There, it, was a, it was a crossroads, basically of people who were headed west for one reason or another. And so they had this little dream of a metropolis. And until the mill burned in 1887 and the railroads went different directions, they still held out their hopes that this was going to be a major thoroughfare. So all we have left today is this little school to testify to the fact that there was once a thriving community here. Well, at one point there were two stores, there were two blacksmith shops, there was a hotel, there was um, a general store. There was a feed, the feed mill plus the elevator and the, and, the, and the grinding mill. So the community as such kind of developed all around us, particularly to the north and to the east and the west because a lot of the early pioneer families uh, selected land that was close by to the village assuming you know that they were probably going to be incorporated into it or they were going to be part of it at some point. Sure. And there is a, a kind of a gravel pit over across the road or across the county road now that w that did have farmsteads on it. And so once the county road went through and once they discovered that there was gravel over there then that sort of changed the the direction of the of the traffic flow here because initially the stagecoach line would have come down from the fort and cut across um, and gone across a little bridge that was built in 1875 also and is still standing. I tried to get to it last spring, but it's overgrown with bushes and trees and things. So it's, unfortunately we can't see it, but it's pretty astounding that it would remain here that long. And in 1905, I've come across records that say that they did a little repair on that bridge and kind of replaced some of the, the uh, wood parts of it. So it was maintained and it was, it was um, used. Um, and they also used to use it sort of as a neighborhood posting place. If there was some news that needed to get out or you, you know, there was a death or that, that they wanted, were having a party, a barn dance or whatever, they would post a note up there. So that it was a, it was a place where most everybody, if they were going to come into town, would see whatever was going on. And there actually was a, a mail deliver here from about 1868 until 1902. So, and, it, and we know that because of the mail coming this way and going to Pembina that it came twice a week, at, at, probably during the um, late 1860s and 1870s. I don't know that there were ever uh, t houses here. Basically, there were the businesses as far as I know, so I don't, I know I don't have any idea. My grandparents lived just in those trees that are south of the school over there, and they had a little green house, and that's the only house I've ever seen that was part of this village site. So I really don't think there were houses that were ever built here simply because there were so many farms that were close by. So at that point, they really didn't need to. And they probably didn't have time because they were, as I say, a crossroads, there was lots of traffic coming through here. They had guests to take care of. They probably didn't have time to, 
you know, think about building a lot of houses and, and really getting the, the village underway. And I, I would suspect that um, had they, you know, won the battle to be the, called the county seat, certainly things would have been different.